Hi guys, thanks so much for watching my YouTube videos. I want you to know that your likes, comments, and shares mean the world to me. Now, a few weeks ago, when we toured the gardens here at Clover Hill, several YouTubers asked to see the interior of the house. So today, we're going to film the first part of what I hope will be a multi-part house tour. The house was built in 1826 by Nathan Wilde. Mr. Wilde was a textile manufacturer who migrated to America from Manchester, England. The house remained in the Wilde family's hands until 1975. Mr. Silverfox and I are only the fifth owners of the place. Now, the house was a crumbling wreck when we found it in 2002. As proof, here's a picture of the entrance hall. As you can see, the plaster walls and ceiling had deteriorated down to the lab. Mr. Silverfox and I decided to buy the house and restore it to its 19th century glory. So let's step inside and I'll show you the restored entrance hall. My favorite part of the entrance hall is Lily the Biggle. She likes to hang out on the carpet here. And speaking of carpeting, when we bought this house in 2002, all of the floors were covered in beige shag carpeting. Carpeting was rotted out. It was really awful. So Silver Fox and I pulled up all the carpets and about a billion carpet tacks and staples and we uh, countersunk the nails and what we found were these beautiful heart pine wide plank floors. And we recently had the floors refinished. I think they came out beautifully. This alcove was created when a turret was added to the house around 1890. I designed the curtains for the Bay of Three windows several years ago. And then my friend Kevin Weldon took the drawing of the design and he amplified it very dramatically. And I love the, the green sage fabric and the gold trim. The alcove is a perfect place for a round table and a flower arrangement. We have purple toned zinnias, pink joe pie weed, white phlox, which is very fragrant, white gladiola, blue salvia. These are all common flowers found in almost anybody's garden. You probably have them in your own garden. And there are lots of greens in here too. Uh, this is a green and chartreuse hosta. There are several of these leaves in the arrangement. And let's see if we can find it. Oh, here's some uh, asparagus fern cut from the asparagus plants in my kitchen garden. And this is Thuja Green Giant, cut, cut from the shrubs that, that frame my property. You saw these shrubs in my last video. The alcove is framed by a huge mahogany arch. The arch was probably designed right here on the property. If you're ever looking for paintings for your entrance hall or another room in your house, and you'd like to find 19th century paintings, then by all means go to auction houses and look for portraits rather than landscapes. I found this gentleman. I have no idea who he is, but I liked him. I found him rolled up uh, in a cabinet at an auction house, and I paid almost nothing for him. But I did have him framed in a beautiful gilt frame. And besides paintings, I like to collect 19th century games tables. These two can be found for very little at auction houses. I love the table's carved pedestal and scrolled legs and clawfoot feet. Opposite the alcove are these mahogany pocket doors. There are lots of pocket doors throughout this house. The doors are equipped with these 19th century brass escutcheons, or is it escutcheon? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And as you can see, there's even a key so we can lock the pocket doors to keep the servants out. Would that we had any servants. The entrance hall is actually in the shape of an L. Uh, and before we go around the corner, let me point out the wallpaper. So we found this reproduction 19th century wallpaper from Waterhouse wall hangings. And the pattern is called Duxbury. Throughout the entrance hall is this very broad chair rail. And beneath the chair rail is wainscoting. 
I painted the wainscoting Benjamin Moore's Norway spruce because it seems to go very well with the blue-green of the wallpaper. So around the corner is yet another games table and another flower arrangement. Aaron Brady made this one in one of my antique soup terrains. And here's the feature that made me want to buy this house, the staircase. It curves beautifully and leads to the upstairs bedrooms. And on this East Lake Newell post is a conquistador who lights the staircase at night. The conquistador has been in this house since 1850. And behind this door is the second entrance to the parlor. And directly behind me is the dining room. And beyond the dining room is the music room. And then there are many more rooms upstairs. And I'd love to show you all of these rooms in future videos. So let me know if you'd like to see them by posting a comment below. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you ever find a falling apart 19th century house, you might like to do what the Silver Fox and I did, buy it if you can and restore it. You'll be saving a piece of American history. And if you'd like to see the other rooms in this house, be sure to post a comment below, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye.